Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Shah Weekly. Let's go ahead what we will be building in this video. You can see that this is a dynamic island uh, which Apple just announced in the last event. And what you'll be learning in this video will be to create this kind of like an animation for the dynamic island. Now the dynamic island can provide a lot more animation and that's just one of them. But you'll see that with SIF UI, how easily you can create these kind of animations and your own dynamic island using Surf UI. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, everyone. So now that you have seen what we'll be building, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a separate view. Now you can create this separate view in a different file, but uh, just for the sake of simplicity, just going to go ahead and add it over here. Just going to call it dynamic island view, which is going to be a view. So let's go ahead and create that. And we will start with simply saying dynamic island view and trying to put it in our content view. There we go. Okay. All right. So now we can go about creating that how the dynamic island is going to look like. And this is obviously just about animation. Uh, Apple does a lot of other stuff within the system architecture to, to make it work with many different uh, applications that they have. We're not obviously going to do that. We're just looking for that uh, dynamic island view kind of like on the top somewhere over here. And when we click on it, it kind of animates. All right. Okay. So we will start with creating a vertical stack. And Apart from that, we're going to go ahead and say at stack and we will say image with a Batman. And so this image is I have already added this Batman poster, which you can see right there in the assets. I've added it. So that is the same one that I'm including. Okay, we're going to mark, make sure that this is resizable. And since we want this to be kind of like a circle to be displayed, as you have already seen in the original or the official video, uh, the video like what we will be building. So now we can go ahead and say circle. So it's going to start clipping the shape into a circle. Great. And now we can go ahead and add a little bit of padding, let's say 10. Okay. Next up, uh, this is a edge stack. So what we want to do is the actual image that you can see right now is actually very big. So what we want to do is make it a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to go ahead and say frame and the width we will start with let's say 30 and the height we will also start with 30. Okay let's go ahead and uh, probably this should come after resizable. Okay so you can definitely see now that the size of the image is much smaller. You can adjust the width and the height to accommodate your needs, but for us, it looks perfectly fine. The next thing that we want to do is add a spacer. And now we can use image with chart.bar.fill. So we are displaying kind of like a chart control over there to indicate that the movie is playing. And we can use a foreground color of white with a bit of a padding. Now, the foreground color of white is not really going to get displayed because we are uh, white over white. So now we're going to go ahead and say frame with a maximum width. So let's go ahead and do a maximum width of infinity and a maximum height. Right now, we're just going to go with 60. Okay. And we will also send the content shape to be rectangle so that we can click or tap on the whole area. And now we can go ahead and set the background. For the background, we will use the color black, just like the dynamic island color. You can see it's looking nice. Again, we want to clip shape a little bit, meaning so that it is a little bit rounded corners. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. And in the end, we can also add padding. Perfect. So it's looking actually really good now that we are able to display these things. We want our this particular control 
not over here, but probably somewhere on the top. So we can go ahead and since we are inside the V stack, we can go ahead and push out the spacer. And you can see that now it's on the top. And it looks kind of good. You can see it looks nice, but there's no interaction, meaning we can't really touch it. I can't really do anything about it. This means that we need to add a tab gesture, which I can do a on tab gesture. And what I want to do is to toggle between the expanded and the collapsed state. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go ahead and use a binding. And the reason that I'm using binding is that somebody else is going to be responsible for passing this state so that the parent view, which in this case is a content view, can get that value and can also update. So in order to do that, I will go ahead and create another state variable inside the content view. And you can name this variable anything you want. I'm just calling it expanded, but you can call it anything you want, on, off, or whatever. And now I can go ahead and pass that binding to the child view, which is the dynamic island view, so that when the dynamic island view switches, toggle between the expanded, then the content view will also know. And it can take any, uh, any steps to do anything that you want. So when you go ahead and click on the tab gesture, we are going to say expanded.toggle. This means that if it's true, make it false. If it's false, make it true. Perfect. Now, what will happen when you actually make it true? Because right now, initially, it will be false because that is what we're passing. And that is where our implementation is going to come in handy that what exactly what we want to do. All right. So let's go ahead and check this out. Um, after the image, well, first of all, the image site will change. So let's go ahead and see if that works. So right now it is 30, but I'm just going to say if it is expanded, meaning if expanded is true, then go ahead and use a different size, let's say 80. And kind of like the same thing we can do for our height over here also. So if it is expanded, then go ahead and use 80 or else use 30. Expanded right now is false, but let's go ahead and tap on it. You can definitely see that the image is definitely expanding. But in the original animation, you saw that this whole thing should be expanding too. And that's what we want to do. So what we will have to do is go back over here, right here and we will give it some sort of a different max height based on the expanded state. So I'm gonna say if it's expanded, then use 200 or else use 60. Okay, looking actually much nicer. Now, it would be nice if we have some sort of an animation. So we can use many different kinds of animation, but for this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a spring animation. And in the spring animation, we're going to pass in a couple of different things, like the response. Response time will be 0 0.6, or you can play around with it. We have damping fraction. I'm just going to set it to 0 0.6 also. And the blended duration, I don't think that really matters that much, but you can look at the documentation if you want to. Uh, I haven't really used blended duration over here. So if I go ahead and click on it, uh, where is it? Right there. You can see the duration of second in which uh, to interpolate changes to the response value of the spring. So this, all of these things are kind of like the duration. So this is a blended duration. This is the response. This is kind of like the stiffness of the string. And this is the damping, meaning like how kind of like your, uh, you know, string is kind of too tight or is it not too tight kind of thing. All right. And inside the width animation, we are changing the expanded toggle. Now, if I do that, you can definitely see a little bit of a different thing going on. Much nicer effect, right? Very nice. Okay. The other thing that we want to do is when it is expanded, we want to show a little bit more information, like the name of the movie and like a subtitle of the movie. So we can add these things right over here. We can say if it is expanded, 
then we can display a vertical stack that will have the name of the movie and also the kind of like the subtitle of the movie. So let's go ahead and click on that. There we go. And you can have different effects if you want to, but this is kind of like what is going on in our case. It kind of comes in and fades out. All right. Okay. Now, other thing that you will see over here is that we are using these kind of like a hard coded values, at, at least for the frame. And we can change that by creating some sort of an enum or a static variable for these values. So now, after you have adjusted and created image frame, we should be able to use these values from the image frame rather than hard coding it. So we can change it over here if we want to. The effect will be kind of like same. You can see it's still working. Now, one other thing that we can definitely add are the controls. When it is expanded, it would be a good idea to show the different kind of controls like play, uh, you know, backward and forward kind of controls. So let's go ahead and see that how we can accommodate that. So right over here, let's say after our image has ended, all right, so right over here in the image has ended, you can see that currently we are inside the X stack, right? Now, if we want to add some sort of a control, it would be a good idea to look at the vertical stack. So let's see where the vertical stack ends. It's right there, you can see, all right? Now, inside the vertical stack, we are checking out the frame, we are doing all of these different things, but all of these different things are related to the edge stack. Uh, so maybe we should move all of this stuff. Let's see if we can move this to the V stack. There we go. Everything still works correctly, right? I mean, everything is fine, but now what has happened is that our edge stack is completely kind of like free and our V stack, the parent contains all of those other uh, design like modifiers like frame, content shape and all those things. And now since we're in inside the vertical stack, we can say that if it is expanded, then we can also create some other things. And these things can be different kind of controls like image control for backward, play and forward. And there we go. You can see that it only appears when it is expanded and you'll be able to interact with those uh, and you know use it at your convenience. So there you have it. We have created the dynamic island animation in SwiftUI. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. As you can see, I have a lot of different courses on Udemy for iOS development, even for Flutter and Node.js development. I have courses on building augmented reality application using Reality Kit. I have one of the great courses on Swift UI. And if you want to learn reactive programming using Combine, I also have a course on that. And Core Data, Rx Swift, and a lot more courses. So definitely check out my courses. The link to the course is right there in the description, which will take you to all the courses. Thank you so much for your support.